So earlier this week I was streaming and I had a viewer that popped in and they asked the question, Hey Zan, have you noticed that there's a lot more man coverage coming back into Madden 22? And at the time I kind of chuckled at it. I was like, God, no way. After last year with the one step ahead and the bench press metas and setting your purples to 20 or 25 and never playing a deep zone, man coverage is not as good as it was last year. And I kind of blew off the question, but still answered it politely. But what was funny was later on in the stream, I faced nothing but man coverage. It was just straight two man under. And honestly, I didn't have any problem beating it because I do believe it's not that difficult to beat. But the fact that somebody asked me that, and then I faced nothing but man coverage after the first weekend of elims during the MCS Ultimate Thanksgiving, kind of brought into my mind that maybe we might want to look at some man beating plays or in this particular video, the best man beating route that you can find in Madden 22. So let's go ahead and get into it. What is up guys, Zan from the Zan YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the whip route. The whip route is actually the best beating man. Nailed it. The whip route is actually the best man beating route in Madden 22. And we're gonna start off by showing you the simple hot route which every single receiver has on the field. And you're gonna realize that you don't need an ability to actually run this. And pretty much anybody can run a whip route against man-to-man -man coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Ravens playbook here. And I'm just gonna choose just an arbitrary formation. Let's go ahead and run a spread set. And then let's just call simple man coverage. So um, what you're gonna notice with the whip route is that this route is just so well equipped on its double move to take advantage of the locomotion that exists in Madden 22 on next gen, uh, in that the DBs don't really change direction that well. Um, I think that the wide receivers kind of have a different locomotion style than the DBs, at least in my opinion. They run the routes a little bit more authentically, but the DBs really can't keep up with any double moves. Um, really in general, double moves tend to beat man coverage. It could be a whip, uh, you know, a stick nod route. It could be a corner post or a post corner basically anything with multiple cuts and it gives man-to-man -man coverage a lot of trouble and you don't really need route running abilities to get this done. So I'm gonna show you guys a double whip uh, concept here. We're just gonna run off the coverage on the outsides and isolate our slot option. So again, you're gonna see here the whip on both sides gets open by about five yards. Now, naturally, you can tell here that this is probably a route that's better thrown to the wide side of the field, give you room to be able to turn the corner and get up the sideline after the catch. I also think it's worth noting that if you are a player that likes to play from the pocket a lot, um, it might be worth having an accuracy ability like maybe pocket dead eye or uh, inside dead eye if you're throwing this to a receiver before he uh, leaves the numbers or maybe sideline dead eye if you're throwing it out closer to the sideline and that's going to help you get a little bit more consistent um, you know throws on the outside now for me right here I've got I believe gift wrapped on my quarterback which is supposed to make throws to the tight ends a little bit easier to catch. I don't think it's really an accuracy ability. Uh, plus, this is actually considered a slot receiver position that Mark Andrews is on. But I'm just kind of putting this in the back of your mind that it might be worth taking a look at maybe some accuracy abilities to really pinpoint this throw and make this a lot tougher to defend. But as you can see here, the whip route is rather good. It's an, uh, it's a route that is going to consistently beat man coverage, does not matter. Um, you know, on the short side, it's gonna get you three to five yards. I think this is a phenomenal blitz beating route also because it's available quickly to the quarterback. As you can imagine, if I were to be in some sort of defense, maybe like an overstorm brave, um, you know, this ends up being something that is really risky for a safety to be playing man coverage on a guy because if they get beat, I mean, there's nobody back. You know, you just make one guy, you know, block downfield and you can end up being out for a one play score on something that is running, you know, within three to five yards from the line of scrimmage. So it's a really, really good route. Um, a lot of players don't run them because this has been a very zone heavy meta so far in Madden 22. But as I mentioned at the top of the video, we're starting to see a little bit more man coverage come back into the game. Um, I've seen, in fact, uh, a, a triple one step ahead lineup once. Um, it was not good. Um, that person was stuck in Madden 21. But, uh, you know, this is still something that we're seeing players go to. They can't rely on zones. A lot of players just think that drop zone is terrible. So they're going to man coverage. Now, before we get into taking the whip to the next level, I do want to talk to you about the fact that I think that match coverage is really the way to go. I talk about match coverage all the time. I'm sure you guys are sick of it, but honestly, if you guys are struggling to get stops in coverage, zone is not the answer and neither is straight man. 
go to match coverage, go to gridirongameplans.gg and watch the match coverage game plan. If you guys are enjoying this free YouTube content, I would strongly urge you to go over to my strategy website. Gridirongameplans.gg is your one-stop source for all things competitive Madden. Every week in our Vault Update, we take a look at the meta or the most effective tactics available being used by pro players on the MCS circuit, breaking down not only how and why the pros do what they do, but most importantly, how you can counter those metas when you face them in online gameplay. On top of that, your subscription also includes any and every offensive and defensive game plan released on the website while your subscription is active and access to our Discord server where every single Wednesday, we have a live lab session covering the week's Vault content and any questions you guys have about Madden. So make sure you guys head over to gridirongameplans.gg. $9.95 per month unlocks the entire website. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the whip route and making it a little bit more overpowered. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the Baltimore Ravens playbook uh, and we're gonna go into the gun spread Y flex. Now this is a formation that is really, really good. Uh, it's got some unique plays. Um, it's got some option style plays. It's got some RPOs and it has the ever dangerous circle. Circle is a phenomenal play. It's a quick snap special. It beats darn near every coverage with just snapping it quickly. It's an amazing, amazing progression based play. Now, right next to it in the play call menu in the middle is a play known as Y sale. Now this Y sale play has a whip route stock and you're gonna want to look throughout the game and see if you can find some of these, but some of these plays that have stock whip routes allow you to smart route a whip. So let's go ahead and take that onto the field and show you exactly why we would want to do that. So let's show you first with this play, I'm gonna hot route Duvernay onto a whip and I'm gonna try to smart route it. So I'm gonna hit Y, Y, right bumper, and it doesn't register. It won't let it register whatsoever. Now let's go ahead and take this and reset the play. So now you see the play again. This is a different looking whip. If you were to compare Duvernay to, I'm gonna hot route Andrews, clearly these look like different routes. The route that Devin Duvernay is on can be smart routed. And you see that when you smart route it, it will then run its cut over the middle at the 10 yard mark. Now, I'm gonna move the ball so that way that route has room to work on the wide side of the field. This is really, really good because now a route that you can consistently rely on against the man coverage to basically torch that assignment is going to do so at about a depth of 12 to 15 yards. So now you see here, he runs the post, then the whip to the back to the outside. And look how open he is against that coverage. Very, very easy throw that you guys can make to the outside to pick up 15 yards against man to man. And the cool thing about this is that most players, if they play man to man and they want to put a zone on the sideline, they're going to do so at maybe 25 or 30 yards. They're certainly do, not doing it at 15 yards. They're not doing it at 10 yards. So this is a route that's going to beat man to man coverage and get open perfectly in an area where they're not going to drop a zone. And then you're going to be able to rack it up the field. And, uh, you know, if you have a ball carrier move or if you've got any stick work at all, you should be able to make that guy miss on the sideline with a spin move or a juke or something like that. But again, you could just consistently throw that ball out to the sideline, provided you don't get shed by uh, the AI in practice mode here. Uh, but you can consistently throw this ball to the outside and be able to uh, pick up, you know, a ton of yardage. This route is truthfully one of the most dangerous man beating routes in the game. And now we're going to go ahead and show you the best formation to run this smart routed whip out of. <laughs> <Whoop -ah! laughs> okay, so now we are back on the other side of the ball. We've flipped the teams and I've got the New England Patriots on offense. And with this particular play, we are going to show you guys the best whip route to smart route in all the Madden 22. And this is going to come to you specifically out of the Y off trips Pats formation in the Patriots playbook. And the play that we're going to be looking at is known as tight end whip. Now, what's really, really good about this particular play is that the tight end whip is in a spot where if they're playing man to man coverage, oftentimes it's coming in the form of an inside linebacker, which is not known for being a true cover spot. And if somebody's playing like a nickel package, they're going to put like an Ed Reed or a Sean Taylor or somebody like that there. Somebody who is a decent zone coverage safety, but not necessarily truthfully an amazing man to man defender. Somebody that's just fast that can run. Um, and that's really not gonna allow them to play adequate coverage on this. So I'm gonna choose to play tight end whip here. Uh, I am going to make sure that I put in, I'm gonna put in uh, Janu Smith, who's a little bit faster, I believe. 
and uh, run him on this route. So again, tight end whip and the gun Y off trips Pats. If you guys are wondering, the Bills have this formation as well, but they do not have this play. So this is the only playbook in the game that has this particular play, and it's still very, very good. So tight end whip, you know, whipped. Whoop <laughs> and I'm gonna show you this against two man under, right? Now we're actually gonna go through this entire play against man, zone, and match. So stay tuned for this. But with the tight end route, you can smart route that up. And the setup that I would run for this, I mean, there's a lot of different setups you can run for this play, but I am a big fan of this setup. And the reason I like this setup is that this is gonna allow you to uh, really, really cook man and also match with the same setup. Uh, and then any Mabeling, you're gonna have multiple levels of sideline routes, starting with Aguilar on the smoke, low. You're gonna have the medium sideline route or the short medium sideline route in Smith on the whip route back to the outside. And then you're gonna have Kendrick Bourne running the post route. That's gonna be your deep intermediate sideline route. And then you've got Myers, Jacoby Myers running the runoff route. Uh, which could be a streak or a fade, and that's your deep sideline route. So this actually places four routes on the sideline, which is going to um, kind of space these guys out so well that even if you face somebody that runs a, a good Mabel setup, one of those routes is going to be wide open. So let's go ahead and start first and foremost with man-to-man -man coverage um, and just obviously how Patrick Queen is going to struggle with Jonu Smith on the smart route and tight end whip. So he runs up, across the middle, back to the outside. He's open by, shoot, 10 yards um and you're gonna be able to throw that very very routinely obviously you guys know at this point whips beat man coverage let's go ahead and move on now into kind of like your mabel style zone so when we talk about mabel unfortunately i don't have the ability to set my zone depths in practice mode we are most certainly talking about your mike blitz three meta so i'm gonna go ahead and call that and i'm gonna set various zone depths and we'll go through slowly and kind of explain what uh, you will you will most often be looking at when you're when you're facing this. So again, with the same setup, you smart route A, you put right bumper on a fade, you put B on a, a smoke route. You're creating levels of routes on the sideline flooding. And what most players tend to do in this defense is they do what is referred to commonly over the last two years as double Mabel. Now, it's not true Mabel coverage. The definition of what Mabel is in real football isn't really what it is in Madden, but let's just stick with the vernacular, the jargon of Madden and, and kind of explain this. So most players are going to shade this so they have blue zones on the field. Those blue zones for most players are going to be set to a depth of give or take. 25 or 30 yards and the reason for that is they want those to be the the zone that drops so far back that uh your deep 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 corners don't get open and some of the crossing routes that are found in the game don't get open running from you know the left to the right in this example now with this they're also going to play purple zones. so what this does effectively is it puts so many zones on the sideline forcing the user or the offensive player to throw at the user which is the middle linebacker position on this so there's a lot of field um basically given to the user on this and um you know a lot of players uh, when you face this they're going to hitch over the middle and make the user choose left or right but with this particular setup we're going to play right into what the user thinks on the defensive side of the ball is the strength of his defense which is we're going to attack the sideline uh against a defense that is designed to stop the sideline floods so when we talk about this we're talking about 25 or 30 on the blues and we're talking zero or five on the clouds or i'm sorry the the purples um and and with this again we can't do that so the best way that i can kind of mimic this is i'm going to put this guy into a hard flat uh and then we've got this guy into the cloud flat and the way that this ends up working is this guy being set to 25 or 30 he's going to back up right here if the ball spotted on the 40 he's going to back up to the opposite 35 if he's set to 25 yard on, on his depth now, Humphrey, he drops even further over the top of that because we've got Jacoby Myers running the streak route. So he has to respect the verticality of Jacoby Myers. So what you end up with effectively is a coverage that is spaced out like this on the sideline. And you could very, very easily, if you take a look at just the players I've stacked on the right side of the sideline, and you take a look at this route, there is not enough bodies to handle the multiple depths of this. So Myers is running off the deepest of the zones. Bourne is occupying the deep side or the medium, I guess, sideline, the middle sideline zone on this. And then Smith is running another deep sideline route that is far enough underneath of that zone that you're going to have a throw there. So then you're able to isolate a high low on Aguilar or the whip route. So let's go ahead and respot the ball here and we'll go through this again to the best of my ability, explaining to you how this is going to work. So start off with um, obviously we kind of understand here. I'm going to mimic 
him being in a zero by putting him in man coverage on the smoke. Uh, and then again, we're just gonna kind of put the cloud flout out there, uh, you know, on the, the right side. And then we're gonna run this exact same route combo. So smart route A, fade right bumper, smoke B. Uh, you can block the running back if you wish. But again, when we run this play, you're going to be looking at this and you're gonna say, oh, dang, you know, I can go ahead and throw, you know, the high or the low between A and X. If that sideline intermediate zone plays on the whip route, we throw the crosser behind it or the, the post behind it. So, you know, we're basically playing high low between Janu, who we could actually throw a low ball right here, by the way. We could just throw the low ball right here and, and, and possession catch it. Or we let him run the sideline and we read this guy. Okay, well, if he's going to play the tight end whip, we're going to have the crosser wide open behind him for us to throw into this area, which is what we did. So now we go back into this and we try to show you uh, kind of what I'm talking about here. So um, I'm going to, again, we're going to mimic this be Houston being in a zero yard purple or a hard flat, right? Um, now what we're going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to mimic how this would work. So, so I know this looks a little funky, right? But I want you guys to kind of pretend for the sake of this, that this is what our defense looks like. So what ends up happening with this is we're going to pretend that this guy is set to the 30 yard zone. That's going to play so far back that he's playing this post uh, to Kendrick Bourne. And then we're going to have this guy in the short outside zone. That's going to be playing the flat. And then that whip, as you're going to find out, gets into such a great spot that you're actually able to throw it as the intermediate route. So going back to our initial setup that looks like this offensively and my play art is glitched again. Myers is on a fade. He is on a smoke and John Lee Smith is smart routed up. But with this concept, you then read it and you're like, OK, well, I could go ahead and throw the whip, which again, my play glitched. But um, again, you understand here that you're reading uh, basically high low with the whip and the, the smoke. Then you're reading high low with the post and the, the whip. And then obviously you've got the ability to low ball the whip uh, in the event that the middle of the field is open. So let's show you that last on this setup. So here we go with this particular setup. Um, let's go ahead and double Mabel. So again, you're going to get all these sideline zones kind of busting out. And then you kind of drop back on this and, and realize that you've got the middle of the field open. So you snap this football. You're like, OK, well, we go ahead and lowball this and then just kind of, you know, make that possession catch. Now, gunslinger ability is going to make this a lot better. Uh, naturally, I'll go ahead and do it one more time. You know, you, you definitely want the ball to get from A to B as fast as possible uh, to prevent those acrobat picks and, you know, things of that nature. But um, again, you're you're going to be in pretty good shape with this. So snap this ball. You see that he's going to whip throw the low ball and then possession catch it. So really, really hard to use her too. The user is in a lot of conflict on a setup like this. Uh, and again, this beats man, this beats zone, this kills match. So let's go ahead and go, go finish this with match coverage uh, and get you guys on your way. You guys know I'm a big time match proponent. I love my match coverage, but there are definitely routes that beat ma uh, match coverage. You just have to scheme a little bit harder uh, against match to, in my opinion. Um, but this is an amazing match beater as well. So. Uh, again, the play is tight end whip. It's not whipped. Whipped is. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and call two, four, five, and let's call quarters. So again, with that same setup, what you're going to notice with this is that you basically just are going to throw the out cut to the tight end because that's going to end up being matched by um, the three rec, and that's an easy throw. Easy, easy throw. And more often than not, you're going to end up with. Um, you're more often than not, you're going to end up with the. Um, the whip even more open than that. So again, you kind of see how this how this operates. Uh, there you go. You throw that right there. You see that that's even more open than it was. And then, of course, with the uh, the backside post on this play against match coverage as well, that is something that you can throw. Uh, so if you look at X and you're like, OK, I've got a I've got a, a matchup I like here. You know, you can throw this ball, you know, with a velocity ability, you can throw that out there and actually get it to him and lead him, you know, down and away or up away from the match coverage. But that is something that is available to you as well. But I really, really like uh, this this particular coverage. You could also do something like this, completely clear out the right side of the field for this whip, isolate it, 
uh, and, and you see that that kind of opens up that sideline a little bit more. Again, this is without a velocity ability. So you could throw some absolute lasers with this concept uh, against man, match, or zone. I hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, please make sure that you drop a like on this video. Subscribe here to the channel. We're pushing 10,000 subscribers. Should be hitting that very, very soon. Thank you so much for all the support uh, since I started this channel up in February of 2020. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the next 10,000. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. We'll see you guys tomorrow with our next video upload. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab and good luck. Whoopah!